Hi everybody, Rob here. And in this video, we're gonna look at the Huon Canvas 24 Pro 4K. Now, this is a drawings monitor, as you can see, or a graphics tablet display, however you see that. Um, and it has a few features that I wanted to look at, but let's start by talking about what you get in the box. So first of all, you get the, the actual display itself. Now, what's interesting about this, if you've looked at this kind of device before, is that there are no buttons, no express keys, nothing on, in the way um, as you work. And I think this is a good decision because it's, uh, it makes it firstly good for left and right handed people because some of these devices have them just down one side. And if you're trying to work you know, with one hand on buttons and one holding the stylus, then that doesn't always work. And not all of these devices enable you to, to rotate them. Um, so I think that was a good choice. And how they dealt with that, instead of having to have a keyboard in front of you or anything, is by supplying this thing. So this is a cool little device, um, which has, I think it gives you just over 20 uh, customizable buttons. Um, and you can see that some of these have arrows on them, so you can set them up for um, cursor keys and so, so on and so forth. This one and this one, depending on the orientation that you decide to work with it, um, could be the space bar, or they just make it a little bit easier to work with. You can see that one's got the, the dots on there as well. And then you have the dial, which can be programmed to have three different uses. And what I really like about this dial is it has clicks. I don't know if you can hear that. Uh, it's reasonably quiet, but you can feel it. Um, and it turns nicely, but it means you can be quite precise. And then a quick button press in the middle that allows you to tap through the different functions that you have programmed to it. Now this does sit on the screen nicely if you're using the, the legs that are built in underneath. Uh, if you have this at a higher angle, this isn't held on by magnets, but that's good. That means that you can just leave it off to one side. Uh, you could have it in your lap, you could have it on your desk, wherever. Now, it's Visa compatible, and I think it's a 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters Visa mount on the back, so you could put it on a, a, an Ergotron arm or something like that, um, or any other kind of Visa related mount. Another thing I like about this is that um, the, the bezels on it are just very slightly recessed beneath the glass surface, so you're not always kind of having that rubbing edge on your on your wrist as you work. Um, I like that a lot, but also the kind of the dead space around the actual display itself is it's there so you can rest on it as you work at the edge of a piece, but it's not so big that the device itself becomes kind of cumbersome to deal with. Um, some of them have, you know, kind of inches worth all the way around, which I really dislike. This doesn't have that. Um, that just makes for a, a very pleasant working environment as well as a, a place to work on. Okay, so next up, we have all the, the cable management at the top here. We have USB-C, uh, HDMI, power, um, and the power button just up here. That's the only button that's on the device. Also, we have two USB slots on the side over here. One of those, I have the puck for this. Um, although you can actually run it plugged in, you can plug in the, the supplied cable, which is USB-C to USB-2 uh, underneath there. Um, and there's also a head, uh, headphone jack, so you can listen to your music while you work or plug in an audio device of some kind, uh, which I really like. Uh, now you get the stylus. Now this stylus, um, as with um, other Huion products, I think it's probably the same one, um, is 8,000 or more um, levels of pressure sensitivity and it will register tilt to 60 degrees, so that's pretty good. Um, you get two buttons on here. Um, I have these programmed for a middle button, which is the forward one, uh, which you can also feel has a slight dot on it, um, just if you're working in the dark or it's just under your thumb. And this one for right click and obviously the, the main nib there. Now this doesn't have a back button, which sometimes people would use for an eraser. Um, I personally prefer it like this because I hate the whole kind of process of swapping around and trying to erase like this. I'd much rather have a button on the keypad here um, set to erase um, and then I can just do it on the fly without even lifting my hand away from my work. Now, you also get the puck, which is your stand, which can be left that way or you can, you know, leave it that way. Uh, textured on top, which makes it very easy to just kind of twist open um, and access the knobs under there. Now, what I like about this little puck is that not only do you get spare plastic tips, the standard one that comes pre-fitted, but you get the removal tool and you also get some felt tips. Now, I'll talk about these a little bit more in a minute um, and I'll show you how easy it is to just replace a knob. But let's move on for now. So I'm just gonna pop that back. You also get the obligatory glove 
um, which I do suggest using. Um, maybe they're not the, the most fashionable item, um, but when you're working on a device like this, I think they're invaluable. Not only to prevent any scratches if you wear a, you know, jewelry or anything like that, but also um, just the, the, the kind of the tactile feel that you get as you're working. It means you don't stick to the surface. Okay, so that brings us to the surface itself. Now the surface of this glass uh, is actually laminated to the display itself. So you don't have that kind of weird parallax effects where there's a, if you look at it from a slight angle, even a tiny angle, um, you can see a difference in location from the nib to the actual point of your cursor. You don't get that on this device uh, and that's fantastic. Another note about the, the, the surface itself is it has an anti-glare coating which kind of serves two purposes. Firstly, uh, this is being lit by um, a large softbox uh, here over this desk and really you can't see any glare from it at all. Um, from where I'm sitting looking at the screen here, I can see everything perfectly clearly. Second to that, it also has a kind of a, a nice effect on the traction of the nib on the surface. Uh, if you've used certain devices, um, sometimes it feels like kind of glass on glass or very shiny plastic on shiny plastic and it kind of skates across and I don't like that feeling at all. It doesn't feel like a natural way to interact with uh, your work, uh, especially if you're an illustrator and you're trying to paint and draw. Um, so this feels really good. And just going back to the, the, the felt nibs, they feel even better. They feel absolutely fantastic when you're painting textures or whatever it might be. Okay, so let's take a look at the software you get. So this is the driver software uh, and kind of controller software. Now there's a link to the store, which we'll ignore for now. We don't need to worry about that. So here you can set up the calibration for the device itself, or you can program the keys. So let's have a quick look at that. Now I'm gonna use Cinema 4D in a second, just to kind of show how I work with this. Um, but here you can set the keyboard here to work with pretty much all the software in a kind of a global fashion. So if I highlight one of these, you can see you have a bunch of options of what you can do. And if you just click it, you can see what the control is that you've got set. Now, for me, I like to go in and set my own software. So I'm gonna look at my Cinema 4D programs. So all the custom functions here, I've got the, the wheel set for scrolling. Um, I have Control, Alt, Shift, and then V, which is a, a helpful one. And um, then I have Spacebar and H and all those kind of things set up. So maybe now is the time to just look at Cinema 4D. Um, so I'll just open that up and I've got a, a file here. So as I was saying, if I want to um, zoom in, I could, you know, I could come up here and I could use the zoom functions to, to work there but that means you're kind of making a disconnect between your work and finding a control and although there are keyboard shortcuts i would much prefer to stick with the puck so what i can do is if i turn this with the cursor over my work it will use the cinema 4d way of kind of zooming in based around the location of your cursor so say i want to work on the hand and i could zoom in here or zoom back out again if i want to go to the face then I can do the same again, uh, which is wonderful. Um, I really like this. I think it's a, a fantastic way of working. Now for me, I usually keep this off to one side and then it gives me a unadulterated view of the whole project. Um, and uh, I just, I think it's a fantastic way of working. Now, as I said, I have the controller set up with some shortcuts. So my right click brings up the menu that you would expect if you're working in Cinema 4D. Now, sometimes you want to access kind of that radial menu. So I have one set up for the V key, um, which I use a lot, especially for selections and also for um, accessing different projects that I might have open. Sometimes I'll create a model in one scene file as it were, and then I'll bring it into a, like a, a main scene file. And this is a great way of flitting between the two. You can also change your view and your camera and all those kind of things. Now, because this is customizable, if I was animating inside of Cinema 4D, then what I could do is um, I could use the controls here for transport, or I could scrub through the timeline using the wheel. Um, so it's just a, another option to open up your workflow and let you work smarter and faster and more efficiently and without kind of breaking from what you're doing with your actual scene file itself. Now, I really love this kind of workflow. Um, 
it's a huge benefit and all of those kind of five second tasks where you might break contact with the work and then come down here or go up to a menu over here and add a tag uh, they all add up and over the course of a day that builds up to quite a substantial amount of time and something like the canvas pro 24 it really helps you kind of uh, just reduce those wasted moments uh, and it also helps you stay creative rather than worrying about what menu something lived in because all the ones you use the most you can just program a key click it without even lifting your stylus and off you go so let's talk about the display itself the canvas pro 24 4k as the name suggests is a 4k display uh, it's a 38 by 40 uh, sorry 3840 by 2160 resolution uh, and it's got a 60 hertz refresh rate now this is very color accurate uh, although i'm working in a, a non-textured model here um, the, the colors in this are, are just incredible um, you get 140 percent of srgb color color gamut um, which is great um, everything is very vibrant and pops um, so bear that in mind as you're working. Um, other monitors that you have might not be capable of displaying that amount of vibrancy and colour range. Um, so keep that in mind because this thing just, it, everything really pops really well. It's also got really wide viewing angle, uh, which I think is almost 180 degrees. Um, you know, it, it's visible so far that you can't actually see what you're looking at because the angle is so sharp. Uh, which is great it's also high dynamic range enabled which is another a fantastic feature um, especially these days as more and more projects require that um, from your work so that's a, an overview of the canvas uh, i have to say it feels great to work with um, i really love it um, the colors are great the the quality of the screen is great the the controller enables you to work like i say without interruption um, and then you've got the different nibs and I must say I think that the different nibs just work wonderfully um, so what I'll do now is I'll, I'll turn this down I'll move this out of the way and then I'll just give you a, a kind of a little overview of how you can change the nibs um, show you the different ones that come in here and um, we'll move on from there okay so let's talk about replacing the nib in the stylus now it's a real simple job we'll just give you a, a twist of the cap there and inside you'll see that there's a, a little sprung metal piece um, and inside there there's a notch that notch just fits over the nib give it a squeeze and pull and that has released the nib now you can take one of the the, the standard nibs or one of the felt nibs and to install it all you do is push it back in um, you can even feel just with your fingertip um, how different the, the, the texture is on those. So just push that in and you're done. What you do then is just stick that back in, give it a twist and your nib is fully replaced. Okay, so in this section I just wanted to take a break from the, the 3D software and just have a quick look in Photoshop because there are certain things um, about this pen display which are surprisingly good um, and you don't at first notice but if you're a texture painter there are some things that are going to be really quite quite good for your workflow um, so I'm just using the standard brush tool and this is just a, a simple one layer document so I'm just going to draw some strokes so draw a few of these now Lots of pen displays have trouble when it comes to the tail. As you start to lift your stroke away from the surface, you get a weird, what well, actually the tail ends up looking like this. So if you imagine this is the, the, the actual stroke, the very tip of the stroke, this section here, will often have this really sharp fall off, um, which doesn't look very natural and it doesn't look like you've just peeled the brush away from the surface of the paper. So if I just zoom in, I'm just going to bring this over, and if I just zoom into one of these, you can see how the taper is incredibly smooth and natural, and it just looks exactly how you'd want it to. Uh, and I think that for texture painters is actually a, a, a particular significance. I think the importance of this is hard to overstate. Um, and I just wanted to highlight that as something that I'd noticed about the, the canvas um, as I've been working. Uh, I think just 
that the overall effect you get from strokes like this um, it makes a, a huge difference to what you do and I think for texture artists in particular um, as you're working in details that can be seen seen and far seen close to the camera and you know further away from the camera in your 3d scene having small details that are uh, appear as you expect them to um, without having to go in and double check everything every time at, you know kind of pixel peeping level like if we come right in here um, you can see the point is really natural it's, it's a lo lovely fall off and that's what I'm looking for in a pen display so I thought I'd mention that um, and also just the um, I mentioned it earlier on in the video but the the, the clicks you get with the, the zoom wheel um, make it really easy to be accurate with your levels of zoom and I think that from a workflow standpoint is uh, massively important as well I, yes there are different ways that you can zoom into your work and you can you know zoom around and move your cursor or your page um, I have this key set to spacebar so I can click and hold and I can drag that around and I can check all these points and make sure that they're all doing exactly what I want them to and they all are um, something else which is worth noting is if I just click in a, just a little bit closer let's look at this one for an instance you can see there's no some pen displays will give you a weird kind of wave as you draw a straight line um, now my strokes are by no means really good straight lines um, but even still you can see that there's no none of this kind of thing going on now obviously I've exaggerated that slightly here but the strokes themselves are fantastic. They're, they're really good. And I've only got smoothing set to the default, which is 10%. Um, so I can do, you know, all kinds of lines and they'll work really, really well. And they'll look just natural. And I think natural is what is the, the important thing to take away from this. Um, yeah, so I've made a bit of a mess on this page, but hopefully you get the idea. Um, I think this, the, 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 the tails of your strokes and even the, the, the way you land on the page. So if I come over here and just I'll start off gently and then get thicker. Let's do that again. So even though I'm varying the pressure of my stroke as I go, it's, it's just, it allows you to keep a really natural expression as you're, as you're painting um, without any kind of weird artifacts. Anyway, I wanted to highlight that because I think it's important. So I'm just gonna back out and um, We'll move back into Cinema 4D and we'll just do a little bit of modelling and I'll um, show you how I use Cinema 4D with a pen display like the canvas because it's uh, it's just such a good tool for it. The combination of such a good display, a really lovely stylus and the, the keypad here I think are just wonderful. So let's go back into 3D and we'll start doing that. Okay, so I've got a clear scene in Cinema 4D here and we're gonna start an actual project just so you can see the, the, the tablet in use. Um, okay, so I'm going to basically create a, a, about as simple a character as I possibly can based on a, a little sketch that I did. So I'm gonna add a cube to my scene and I'm just going to adjust some of the settings here. Now, if, you've, if you're a Cinema 4D user um, and this is gonna be true in some other 3D programs, what you'll probably need to do is come up to edit, go to preferences, and then that will open up this menu here, which is your preferences menu. Go to input devices and make sure that you have graphics tablet checked. Um, otherwise you get some kind of weird, um, kind of glitchy things happening as you try to use a stylus to interact. And you could find that as you're trying to adjust this size, actually what happens is that your cube flies off into the distance. So just be aware of that. Now I'm going to shrink this down on the Z axis or the Z axis for all those Americans out there. And I'm going to change my view because at the moment this looks like just one single plane for each side. And that might not necessarily be what, what, be what I want to have happen. So I'm just going to bring this up away from the ground plane. And I'm going to go to my display and I'm going to choose grid shading with lines. And you can see here the black edges around each face. Now, if I come down to my attributes palette here, I can choose how many faces I want this to be. So I'm gonna add some extras. Uh, I'm gonna add three there, and I think that'll do. That'll do for now. Okay, so I'm gonna stretch this out a little bit more, 
and I'm just using these yellow dots to do this. Um, and if I make a mistake, I can come in and I can, you know, readjust at this point, or I've got the, if we look at the buttons here, I've got this one set to undo. So if I hit that, then, oh no, that's uh, set to H, this one's to undo. There, um, this, this one is set to um, spacebar, actually, this one is set to undo. So, uh, let's just, uh, I'm just going to set the view how I want it. Um, I'm fairly happy with this. So this is going to be the start of my basic character. So I'm just going to make this into an editable mesh. So these are now not parametric anymore. These are all individual pieces of this mesh. So if I come up here into polygon mode, you can see I can select various elements of this. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to select all of the bottom of my mesh. So to do that, I'm going to choose my rectangle selection. And I'm just going to select all of those bottom pieces. And if I come into uh, press T, that's my scale mode. And I'm just going to shrink those down. And I think I'll probably do the same across the top. Um, so if I go back to my selection tool, select the top and then go back to scale, I can shrink that down. So now we're getting a kind of a slightly domed effect going on here. Now I'm going to take this polygon and I'm going to go back to my normal life selection tool. Let's just swing my view around here actually so I can get to the other side. And if I hold down shift, which is on here, this button here, I can select both of those. He says, and it not working. Uh, maybe I didn't, maybe I changed my settings. So let's have a quick look here. Now I thought this was set for shift, which it is, but maybe this is because I need it to be on my Cinema 4D programs. Control. Alt, Shift, V, this one should be H, Alt, and it's not, so I'm just going to reset that to H. Um, this one I want to, ah, oh, that is set to H, but I want that one to be set to undo, so I'm going to change that to undo. And this one should be space, which it is. Okay, so now we're good to go. Let's just make sure that's worked. So let's go Control or Shift. So that should now be Shift. That's right. Okay. And now I'm going to use some of these tools down the side. So I'm just going to take this extrude and I'm going to extrude those out. And if I have a look at my different views, I can choose what I want to do with them and bring them down just a little bit. This is going to form the shoulders of my character. And I'm going to just scale them in. So I'm going to scale them along the z-axis only. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my selection tool and I'm going to go into point mode. Actually, I'm going to go into edge mode and I'm going to select that edge there. And if I just turn around, hit shift and that edge there. And then I'm going to look in this side view. So I'm going to increase the size here, which I can either do by dragging on the arrows or I can use the wheel so just to show you, I can use this here, and this will be centered around the, the cursor. Um, and let's just make sure I scale these along the right axis. And basically all I'm trying to do here is match this edge with the same edge up here. That's close enough. Okay. So I'm going to grab some faces. I've got the same faces. If I change selection mode and I have a previous selection, they will still be selected when I go back to that previous selection mode, which would be from points, edges, faces. Now, these aren't quite square enough for me yet, so I'm going to drag these in, make them a bit squarer. And I'm just going to go back to my move tool and I'm going to just pop them back a little bit. So this is the start of my arms. Okay, that's looking good so far, pleased with this. Um, so I can do the same with the legs. So I'm just gonna come up underneath. I'm gonna choose that face and that face. I'm going to extrude those out. And I think probably for now, that's probably about all I need. 
just to give myself a start of a thigh and bring them down space for a knee space for a shin now this is obviously way too big but I'm not worried about that space for an ankle go back to my selection tool let's select that face hold down shift shift on here that is uh, and then I will go back to if I hit um, uh, actually I'll just go back to the extrude tool for this so I'm going to hit extrude bring them out to be some feet and I'll add a little bit of a, an extrusion at the end there hopefully you can see that here if I zoom right in and bring that over you can see and this will help sharpen things up when I subdivide this okay so let's go back to a bigger view so you can see a bit more clearly what I'm doing I'm going to go back to model view and lift this up so the feet are sitting above my ground plane now this is kind of silly and basic but it should at least inform um, the overall structure of what I'm trying to do so let's go back to face mode grab that face there um, and I'm going to hit I for inner extrude like this and then I'll scale that along the Z axis and I'll probably move it along that axis as well um, and then I'll just extrude that upwards to make some kind of a neck uh, and then I'm going to um, do an inner extrude again so just to open that up and then extrude up like so okay let's go back to the arms so I'm going to go to my selection tool I'm going to select that one hop around hit shift just try and leave this on here so you can see what it is that I'm actually pressing uh, okay happy with that so go to select uh, to extrude bring them out now I'm going to I think I'm just going to scale them down for now like so move them down and then extrude again to that point space for elbows forearms and then I'm just going to add a little bit for wrist just for now whether I give this hands or not is a, a, a question for later but we're making progress so let's just go into selection mode and edges and take um, let's just zoom in here grab that edge and um, let's just swivel around grab that edge and if I shrink them down a little bit give this guy some more of a waist um, what I'm actually going to do is just do a loop select around here so I've got all of those all the way around and I can bring that waist down a little bit okay uh, now I do want it down Okay, so let's just hit H to see the whole thing in my view. Uh, I might zoom out just to touch more. Turn this around and you can see that the proportions are all over everywhere. This is a, a silly character um, and that's quite all right by me. Um, let's go into uh, my side view and let's start shaping some of these points a bit. Okay, so let's grab some points what I'm doing here is selecting kind of through the x-axis of this model and just moving some of these points about and just adding a little bit of the the form that I want for this character obviously his clown feet don't look so good so I'm going to bring them back Bring them back. Uh, let's take the small of the back, bring that in a bit. Um, you can have a biggish belly, I'm fine with that. That doesn't bother me at all. Bring that ankles in. Now, some of this is going to change when I subdivide this. So I'm just going to bring some of those points down. 
I'm going to leave the head looking fairly square. I might bring all of these back. This isn't supposed to be, you know, a realistic human character, by the way. This is just a kind of the, the basis of some kind of a robot, maybe. That's what I was thinking in my head as I was doing it. Okay, so let's go back into object mode. I'm going to add a subdivision surface to the machine. I'm going to drop the cube into there. And then this is now all starting to round out a little bit. So as you can see, this is ugly as hell, but you know, it's, um, it's a start. And you can see where the kind of the knees are starting to flow and I could start cutting some loops in, uh, which is what I'm going to do next. And so I'm just going to hit click KL and just uncheck this subdiverse, subdivision surface. Uh, just turn that off for a minute. Go back to my cube and I'm going to start cutting some loops. So I need to be in polygon mode for this to work. So I'm going to cut a loop around the bottom of the feet and that will sharpen up and make these more of a, a, a flat space. Now, let's just turn it on again and have a look. Where do we need some definition? Definitely around the waist. I'm going to say probably around the bottom of the head. And I'm going to say probably around the bottom of the chest as well. Square that off a bit. And um, maybe along the top of the feet might be a sensible place. Square them off so they look a bit more robotic, I suppose is the word I'm looking for here. Okay, let's cut some grooves in there. Now, this is the point where you can start, you know, really kind of delving into the shapes and working out exactly what it is you want. I'm going to go into a different view. I'm going to go into my front view and I'm going to cut all the way up the front of the limbs and I'm going to go right the way across the arms as well. Uh, now you can obviously see that there's uh, these big fat chunky arms don't look great so let's address some of that um, and I'm just going to use my rectangle selection tool and I'm going to just start playing with these shapes. Now what I should do at this point really is um, cut this model up and work in a mirrored form so that changes I make over to the or to one side will be duplicated over to the other side. Now to do that um, I'm actually going to take the cube out of the subdivision surface and I'm going to open up this menu, add a symmetry object, drop the cube in it. Actually I'm going to delete half the cube first. Do that in this mode. I'm going to grab half of it and I'm just going to delete those points. Oops. Bring them back. That was too many. I need to cut through everything first at the halfway mark. Um, so if I go into polygon mode, drop my selection, and cut all the way through. This is going to work now. Grab that whole half there. Delete it. Now if I drag my cube into my symmetry object, show you a view that makes that a bit more clear um, and then drop the symmetry object into my subdivision you can see that I have the smoothness back um, but this is now working and what will happen is that when I grab points on my cube using my selection tool here you'll find that they go up and down on both sides so this means that you can work much more quickly and you can start shaping things and seeing a bit more real-time idea of what's going on. Uh, so if I was to say want to slim down this waist some, uh, let's just turn around here, I could bring that one in, bring this point in here, maybe that one there, and the centre one. You can see that, that the, the effect of those moves uh, on both sides at the same time. Um, This is not a, an attractive model by any means, and that wasn't the point of this video. This was just to show you 
just a few tools and more than showing you the 3D tools, which I think is less important here. In fact, this is, you know, this is a hideous start to anything. Um, but what it does do is it shows the power of using the keys on the remote here, whether they're on your lap, on your screen or next to you, which is, this is how I normally work, I have it next to me. Um, I think something to, to keep in mind when you're looking at pen displays and working in this way, uh, rather than, you know, having a, a mouse and a keyboard. So with a mouse, you're forever kind of like trawling across your desktop. Um, and the keyboard, your hand is always static and it has to sit in that one place on the keys, which can become tiring and actually damaging over time. Whereas if you're using something like this, you can move it as you feel, you know, if the if you get tired during a work session, you can move it around to a different place and that just relieves the tension on your joints and everything. Um, but more importantly, using a stylus on a pen display like this, especially one with such a lovely surface, which has a really nice traction for the nib, um, but also um, has enough brightness and color accuracy so it's not tiring on the eyes. And what I find is that actually even if you do come up for the rare occasion where you're not going to use a shortcut um, just to, to choose a, a menu item, it just feels very natural. Um, there's no kind of scooting a, a mouse or, you know, scrolling through a wheel on a mouse to, to get to where you want to be. It's right in front of you. It's natural. It allows you to use broad strokes where you need or, you know, nail in fine details where you need as well. And it's a much more comfortable method of working. Um, which will relieve any tension in your body. Um, and if you get this, I, the, the, the angle of these two legs is actually wonderful if this is at desk height. Um, so if you're looking at a kind of, what would it be, 75 or 80 centimeter tall desk? I guess that's probably about right. It certainly is in this country. Um, and you've got a decent chair, then this is an ideal way of working. Um, or, as I showed you before, using the, the visa mounts on the back, um, you could put this onto an Ergotron arm um, and have it exactly where you want it. You could bring it off onto your lap. Um, I've definitely done that before, um, and that's quite a nice way of working. Uh, although you do end up with that whole posture thing where you have to kind of just retrain yourself slightly. Well, I think this is a great way of working. Good chair, good, good desk, this on top. Um, and it relieves a lot of those tensions and you don't end up with a stiff neck and, you know, wrist joints that ache after a few hours of working. Um, I can work like this all day long, um, every day, uh, and I do. Uh, and I usually make results which are much more attractive than this poor chap. So let's ignore him for now and say goodbye. Um, and hopefully this has been of some use. And you can see the benefits of using a pen display. And this particular one is a, a fantastic example. So if you're an animator, an artist, illustrator, texture artist, any creative like that, and you're on the lookout for a new pen display, then I think the Canvas Pro 24 4K is definitely one to add to your shortlist.